Well, let's look what kind of models for the short grade we have. The first one, by far the first, was Vasicek model. Uh, Vasicek uh, suggested this model in the 70s, I think 76 or something like that, so a few years after Black Scholes. And it's still a, it's still a popular model. The, the interest rate in this model satisfies the change in R is A times B minus R dt plus sigma dw, where A, B, and sigma are constants, uh, actually positive constants. Okay? Uh, it can be shown. So, it's a, okay, uh, first of all, this process is not invented by Vasicek, it's called Ornstein Ullenbeck process from stochastic calculus and the statistical mechanics. Um, it has two properties, uh, main properties. One is, uh, one is good and one is bad for pricing interest rates. Uh, the, the good one is the form of the drift, is so-called mean reverting form. Uh, mean reversion is the pr uh, feature it uh, has. Um, what is mean reversion? Uh, well, this B, uh, in fact, has a, uh, has a interpretation of the long-term mean of this process. In fact, it can be proved. I may be asking you to do this in the problem sets. Uh, it may be proved that uh, B is the long-term expected value uh, in the limit when t goes to infinity of, of r. And um, what you want in this type of process, similarly as with stochastic volatility, in fact, we saw the mean reversion in stochastic volatility Heston's model, you, you want a process which oscillates uh, around uh, some uh, long-term mean value. In interest rates don't uh, tend to, on average, go up over time or down, they oscillate. And this, if you if you look at this, if r is less than b, this is going to be positive. Uh, b minus r is going to be positive, so uh, it's it's going to be pushed. If it's less than b, it's going to be pushed up towards b. And if r is larger than b, this is going to be negative, so it's going to be pushed down to b if it's larger than b. So it's always pushed to the b direction, to the direction of b. Okay, that's why this is you know, reverting to the long-term mean. So B has that interpretation of the long-term mean, um, and A has the interpretation of the speed of mean reversion. A higher A means faster you revert back to the mean. So that's good. This is uh, pretty close to uh, what uh, interest rates do in practice. What is bad is it can be shown, in fact, relatively easily, uh, that I that. Uh, this has normal distribution. Uh, it may be in the problem sets, or if not, I will just give you a hint here. So if you look at d of uh, r of t times uh, e to the uh, a uh, t, okay, so if you do e to the rule on this, then this, this, this is going to kill this minus a r term, and you will don't not have R on the right hand side, and then the right hand side will just be a deterministic thing plus Brownian motion, uh, which means it's normally distributed. Okay, so that way you can see that uh, this product here, R times e to the at, is normally distributed, but then also uh, then also uh, the R itself is normally distributed. Okay? So that has normal distribution. By doing e to the rule on this, you can show that this has normal distribution, and therefore r has normal distribution. So why is that bad? Well, it's bad in the sense that it can go negative. In fact, it can go as negative as you wish. There is no limit, a and interest rates don't really go negative. Okay? So that's not so good. I mean, you know, using parameters a, b, and sigma in the right way, you can make that probability of going negative small, but still it can go negative. On the other hand, this is exactly why it's easy to work with this model, because you do have normal distribution. Uh, it becomes mathematically more tractable. Uh, and, uh, and this is something you want, uh, typically, to reduce computational intensity. 
uh, of your models. Uh, so you can, in fact, in this model, we will be able to get closed-form analytic solutions, uh, both for uh, for bond prices and for option prices on, on bonds. Okay, so what's the model is uh, is good in the sense that it's easy to apply. You have analytic formulas for bond prices and option prices, and you do want that. Uh, if you, you know, if, if we remember our usual formula, I'll just write it here again, uh, or for the bond prices, uh, it's, uh, it's much easier to calibrate your model if you can compute this right-hand side here, uh, and then you choose for different parameters, and then you choose parameters which best fit the bond prices. Uh, if you cannot com compute this right-hand side, uh, then it becomes computationally very uh, expensive to to find the, the best parameters that best fit the bond observed bond prices. Okay, so typically you do like to have this right hand side uh, explicit, uh, as long as the model is realistic enough. You appreciate if it's actually uh, an explicit solution, an explicit formula. And with Vlasicek you have that, and not only for bonds, even for op for options and bonds which is less important, though it's more important to have it for bonds. Okay, that's uh, Vasicic model uh, in 70s, but uh, most of the models were suggested later in the 80s, and uh, the second, the two, two most popular ones are Vasicic and then Cox and Ross CIR model. Uh, this is same Cox and same Ross from the Cox was Rubinstein model. Uh, Ingersoll is another professor of finance at Yale. And they said in the 80s, they said, well, let's model the interest rate as follows. The drift is the same as before, as in Vasicek, with mean reversion. That was the good part. AB a, B minus RDT. Uh, the diffusion term, the, the Brian emulsion term, uh, they put square root of R here. Okay. This will make the process never go negative. Why? Because if it hits zero, if R hits zero, this will become zero. And here, if it, it hits zero, it will become A, B, D, T. A times B is positive, it will be pushed up. So if it hits zero, it just gets pushed up. It may hit zero, but uh, it will never go negative. And why square root? Again, we, this is also the same model we had in Heston's uh, stochastic volatility model. Well, it turns out that with square root, you can get, in fact, uh, explicit solutions to the bond prices. And um, why not just R instead of square root of R? Uh, I'll talk about that in the next slide. It doesn't really work uh, with having the R. There is a reason mm, that doesn't work. Uh, and then, then if you're going to put less than R to the first power, square root happens to be mathematically the easiest thing to do. All right. Uh, in, 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 in effect, you're making the volatility of the interest rate uh, stochastic uh, function of the interest rate a square root function. All right, that, that's the, the, the other popular, these, are, these two are the most popular uh, continuous time short rate uh, models. Uh, let me give you some more. Okay, th this one has, has a distribution uh, called the generalized chi-square distribution, uh, but we don't need it.